Hello, welcome everybody. Um, as you're filing in, feel welcome to put in the chat box where you're coming from so we can say hello. with Canada. Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, we got people from all over the place. For any newcomers, as you're filing in, feel welcome to put in the chat box where you're joining us from. Hello and welcome. We've got North Carolina, Washington, Minnesota, Ohio, Texas. There's Wisconsin. I'm from Wisconsin. Bill and Sue in Missouri. Jody in Minnesota. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> Anna from Kansas. Oh, we got people all over the place. Oh, Judith in Canada. <clears throat> Sharon in Ohio, another Canadian. Hello. Richard, I'm from La Crosse, Wisconsin. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Hi, Margaret Lawson. <laughs> go back, go. <laughs> Regina in Orlando. in Pennsylvania. <laughs> Catherine in New York. For any people that just jumped in, if you want to put in the chat box where you're joining us from, we'd love to say hello. And we'll get started in about one minute. Aaron in California. Claudia, we're live on Facebook as well with lots of people posting. So please feel free to comment there as well. We're about to get started in just a couple of seconds here. <clears throat> okay. Just a little more time for any last stragglers and we can go ahead and get started. 
Hello, everybody. Good day to you and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Nick. I'm a senior tour consultant joining you from EF Go Ahead Tours Denver office. And I am thrilled to be your host as we shine a spotlight on Ireland and the United Kingdom. This afternoon spotlight shines on this area of the world, but the real stars today are two tour directors, Call and Ali, joining us from Ireland and England respectively. They're here to share their stories and expertise with us and they'll introduce themselves in just a moment. I'm so excited to get started. So the plan this afternoon is to first share some webinar tips, then we'll discuss what makes this area of the world such a popular travel destination, then Colin and Ali will take it from there and start sharing their insights and answering your questions. Now, if this is your first webinar, here are a couple things to know. Unlike a normal Zoom call, your cameras and microphones will be turned off. You'll only see and hear me and our two stars. And we can't see nor hear you, but we do want to hear from you. So throughout this conversation, please feel welcome to continue using that chat box to interact with each other and the Q&A box to pose questions to our guests. Now, I know many folks have questions about their own specific trips, and I do encourage you to give us a call so we can answer those questions for you, as this time will be used for general questions about travel to the UK and Ireland. And thank you so much to the folks who pre-submitted questions. We'll be able to address those um, and we'll have some more time for a Q&A at the end. So let's go ahead and talk about the UK and Ireland. This area of the world is so special to me because my very first time abroad was to Wales in 2013 for the Six Nations Rugby Tournament. It was a trip of firsts for me. My first international flight, first British pubs, first castles, first time on the tube, first very rainy day on a double-decker bus. The UK and Ireland are common and perfect choices for first-time international travelers. For English speakers, it makes sense. One reason for this is obvious. Traveling to this area feels more familiar or maybe easier because of the shared English language. So, do have to say the Welsh accent did have me questioning if I really did understand English. <laughs> but a shared language is not the only reason people love the UK and Ireland. You may choose to travel here for its breathtaking rural green landscapes, the cliffs with ocean views, or the hustle and bustle of major cities. Or maybe it's for the history. They have so many castles and over 30 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Maybe you're a Game of Thrones fan or an Outlander fan or a Downton Abbey fan and you want to see some popular filming sites. Or maybe you want to experience the friendly and welcoming pub culture of the British Isles. No matter the reason, if you choose to travel to the UK and Ireland, you won't be disappointed. Now, when you're planning to travel, there's a lot to consider. Where should you go? What should you do? How will you get from point A to point B? Will you be comfortable? Are you missing anything? It can be a little stressful, but it doesn't have to be. With Go Ahead, our goal is to take away the stress so you can focus on the fun. When you arrive on your included flight, we'll be there to pick you up and we'll also be there to whisk you around the country or countries you're visiting. The meals we provide are authentic and the hotels are hand-picked, safe, great quality, and in great locations. We have staff all over the world who curate itineraries and experiences so you can experience a destination like a local. And even if you plan perfectly, travel is always unpredictable. When you travel with Go Ahead, you have the support of our team if you have questions or need support before you leave or while you're traveling. But most important of all, you have your tour director. Tour directors are undeniably the fan favorites. They manage the logistics like picking you up from the airport, showing you the major sites and getting you acclimated, but they do so much more than that. They're the friendly face, a teacher, a friend, a local. They're the person you can go to for advice, for a recommendation, or to show you a destination's hidden gems. They're fun, charismatic, entertaining, and full of information. And if there's a small snag or major emergency, they work hard to problem solve, so you don't have to. In fact, you'll probably never know a problem arose. 
today, we have the pleasure of meeting two of these fantastic tour directors. So drum roll, without further ado, let's meet Call and Allie. Call, will you introduce yourself first, please? Oop, you're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I knew I'd do that. Uh, you're very welcome, everybody. Uh, we say in Ireland, talk Cade Meal of Balcha wrote 100,000 welcomes. Uh, my name is Cahill Healy. I come from the southwest corner of Ireland, a place called County Cork. And I grew up um, dreaming of traveling the world. And uh, I was lucky enough to be able to travel a good portion of it, but ended up back to the discover travels that the best place was indeed the place where I came from, in my opinion. So uh, the West Coast of Ireland is my is my dream place and my dream place to work. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to do it. And uh, we're all very looking forward to getting back to work and and to showing you uh, the wonderful places that we go to. So uh, that's me. Uh, over to you, Ali. Hi there. Hi, Carl. Thanks for that. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Ali. It's short for Alison. Um, and as you can probably tell from my accent, I was born and bred in England and grew up in a small village just a little bit outside of uh, London. However, that might be where I grew up, but I'm very proud to say I have um, Irish heritage too. And I'm always delighted and excited when I get the tours that go to Ireland as well, because my great grandmother came from Cork. Um, so Carl and I might actually, we might actually be cousins. Um, I could, uh, I could say this is probably where I got my travel blood from. My great grandfather was from, uh, from Australia and together with my great grandmother and their children and some brothers and sisters, they had a trick cycling troupe that uh, traveled and performed all over the world. So I'm, I'm, I'm heading it from back that far ago, but on a kind of like now, now um, respect, my travel passion started when I was a preteen. We had we had family friends that were French, and I used, and I was excited from a very young age to try and speak and relate to the daughter, my pen pal over there. And from that European exploration, then I started to dream more exotic adventures and saved hard to travel to to India and then do world trips. And it was coming back from a big world trip in my twenties in ninety seven that um, my best friend from home introduced me to EF. And um, I cannot uh, thank him more that uh, this is truly my dream job. I can't believe how lucky I am to get to travel uh, Europe and to um, indulge my passions and my, my interest in history and to show other people traveling for the first time some of the places that I enjoy and love so much. So thank you all for coming and letting me do this wonderful job with you and to, um, have the honor to be fulfilling your lifetime dreams. So that's a little well, bit about me. <laughs> the honor is all ours. We're so lucky for both of your travel journeys to have led you to EF. So thank you again for being here. And I'm excited to get some questions started. So one really popular question we got was, you know, talking about all the different trips that Go Ahead offers, there's a lot to choose from. So from your perspective and call, let's start with you. If you were to pick a favorite dream trip with Go Ahead, what would it be? Well, now, um, I, I have thought about this because we have so many amazing trips. Um, but my, my favorite trip uh, with Go Ahead Tours is a tour called the Wild Atlantic Way. Now, the Wild Atlantic Way uh, starts in Belfast in the north of Ireland, goes around the north coast and down the west coast. This, uh, why is it my favorite? Well, it's, I believe, it is, you, see, you see the best of what we have to offer on the island, the best and most unique. This tour is, is, is a little bit off the beaten track. Uh, that was our kind of uh, remit when we were given to come up with a tour just a little bit different um, and to go to places a little bit less traveled, the road a little bit less traveled, shall we say. Uh, for my, I, I suppose some of the highlights of, of the tour 
for me are certainly uh, in, in the north coast, a place called the Giant's Causeway. Now, the Giant's Causeway is a, is a natural rock formation. You can see it here on the screen. Um, it, was, it was formed by a lava eruption millions of years ago. But as you can see, it, it formed these regular hexagonal uh, uh, rock of, of granite coming up under the sea. And the ancient people looked at it, this and thought, was made by giants and there are some wonderful stories and mythology which is something I'm, I'm very very interested in. in in Ireland we have a story for everything uh, and and the stories go back thousands of years and uh, I, I love I love finding out uh, all of the different uh, aspects and the versions and things like that but the place itself the place is is magical as you can see from the photographs and and photographs are amazing but they do not do it justice. Uh, when you're there and you can, you can experience it for yourself and, and you can uh, breathe the air and even sometimes get the sea spray coming up uh, at you. There's, there's nothing like it in the world as far as I'm concerned. You may know this uh, or you may know this or you may not, but some of this landscape was used to film uh, the very popular uh, TV show, The Game of Thrones, all along the, the north coast of, of uh, Northern Ireland. They use this as location shots. So sometimes you see a place and think, oh, I might have seen that, but you know, probably maybe you saw it on, on that TV show. And they used it for a good reason because the landscape itself is magical. Another um, highlight of this trip for me is a place called Schlieve League. Now, Schlieve League is in County Donegal, which is in the northwest uh, corner of Ireland. It's quite remote. It's spectacularly beautiful. These cliffs you're looking at here are twice the height, in fact, of the more famous Cliffs of Moher, which we also visit on this tour, Cliffs of Moher. You may have heard of, you've probably seen photographs of it. Um, but these ones are, are less visited, uh, at, as I said, twice the height itself of it. And, and when you go up there, you really do feel like you are, you are feeling, uh, you're feeling a kind of wildness which, uh, which is what we wanted to, to share, with, share with you. As I said, I grew up on the west coast of Ireland. And for me, that, that wildness, that, uh, that sense of, of, of the clean air and the sea hitting the edge of Europe has never left me. It's the place, it's my favorite place in the world to go to. And, and I, love to, I love to share it. I love to bring people there and to experience it for themselves. Um, Landscape, of course, Ireland is famous for its landscape. It's also famous for history. Uh, history is a particular interest of mine. In fact, I, I was a, a history teacher uh, at points in my life. Um, and the history of Ireland is written in, on the landscape. We have, we have a, a massive collection of ancient things, people that, people going back to the Stone Age, uh, megaliths, they're called big stone structures. You've probably heard of Stonehenge. Well, there are lots and lots of things like this around Ireland. And on this tour, we wanted to put some of that in as well. Uh, we go to a place called Carrowmore in County Sligo. Now, Carrowmore is, is a, has a large collection of kind of ancient monuments and burial sites. And we do a tour with, a, with an archeologist who explains the significance of the landscape to the ancient people. Uh, and, and it fascinates me that we can go and we can experience the landscape and see these structures, which have been there for thousands of years. Uh, and, and we can share that. And I don't think, you know, I, I think it is something uh, very special uh, that that we can and unique that you can get when you come to the west of Ireland. You can feel how how passionately you feel about this. It's the art of I being do, a tour I director. Do, I do. Yeah. <laughs> art of being a tour director is the storytelling. So I'm curious. Yeah. So you talked about on this itinerary, it's a little bit more off the beaten path. It feels a little bit more authentic in some ways. And you talked about Donegal, but are there any other? When you think of all of our Ireland trips, do you? Do any moments come to mind of a moment of feeling one of those authentic hidden gem experiences? Well, the beauty, I think, of traveling in the west of Ireland is this. It, it's, it's a constantly changing landscape, uh, depending on, on the weather and the season. And the weather does change 
fast. It comes, you can get sun and rain and uh, wind coming and going uh, very quickly. You get different sunlight. Um, it, it attracts artists, uh, especially photographers, but just to experience this, this constantly evolving uh, light is something as well that um, I think there's never a tour that that any of us do in Ireland where where people do not experience this. It's it's a it's a it's a moving thing and it's uh, it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. Beautifully said. Now you had a second favorite. You couldn't pick just one. So no. tell us about your other favorite trip, which is the week in Ireland. And I secretly I have to plug this. I'm very excited that this was one of your favorites because my mom, she's a first time group coordinator and this is the trip she chose as her first go ahead trip. And I think well, she's here today. Hi mom. Oh well. <laughs> I I, uh, I hope I'm uh, I'm doing the tour when she comes along because <laughs> it is one of my favorite uh, because it really showcases Ireland in in uh, it's a it's a different tour than the Wild Atlantic Way in that it begins in Dublin now Dublin is the only big city on the island of Ireland it's it's over a million people and it's the historic capital of the island in fact uh, it. It goes back to the time of the Vikings. The Vikings founded the city back in the in the in the 10th century AD. Um, so it's very historic. It's 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 the center of where you'll find all the great museums. And of course, in the more modern history of Ireland, which is very important to Irish people, is the center of the struggle for independence. Um, and and there, there's so much there. It's the center, of course, if you, if you like the nightlife, you wanna go for experience the pubs of Dublin, which are famous the world over, you'll get the different atmosphere. I see here, you've, the photograph you, 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 used, uh, you have used is a, a pub, a very famous pub called the Stag. Head and and uh, if you go to Dublin, definitely search that out. If you come on my tour, I'll tell you exactly where to go. You can get a pint of uh, pint of Guinness or uh, uh, you know try try the uh, experience the the Dublin pub life. Um, this tour also goes to my own hometown, the town of Cork, uh, the second city of Ireland, where we'll visit Blarney. Um, and a, a visit to Kinsale as well. Uh, but it also does not, it also brings in uh, part of the Wild Atlantic Way. We'll get to see uh, some of the, the cliffs, of course, the cliffs of Moher on our way up to Galway. Now, um, I don't know, have you any photographs there of Galway? But um, uh, Galway is, uh, yeah, here we go. Galway is a city that for many people, when I ask them afterwards, because I always ask, people you know what what did you like and what was your favorite part of the tour and where was the, your favorite place I think Galway wins uh for um for feedback from Galway was my favorite city Galway is is, is compact it's right on the sea it's right on the Atlantic so famous food especially the oysters uh, amazing restaurants um, amazing little pubs um an amazing atmosphere in this in a very small, it's a medieval city, in fact, that had historic links with, with the wine trade for, for France and Spain. And you still get that little Spanish feeling about the place still. Um, so Galway for me uh, is, uh, is a wonderful place to visit. So on this tour itself, the, the week in Ireland, it, it's perfect for people that maybe don't have such a long uh, period of time, or perhaps you know don't want to just want to kind of dip into into the tour uh, experience because it is it's 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 short, but we pack a lot in, and you see you see uh, you'll you'll leave there you'll leave this tour uh, knowing uh, what Ireland is all about. Awesome, and would you? We have a lot of people who have Irish heritage here, mm -hmm. so. Would you suggest this trip as a way to begin your exploration of your ancestral heritage if you come from Ireland? Absolutely, yes. Um, there are many, many millions of people in North America, in both Canada and the United States, who have uh, who have some Irish connection. Um, I was speaking to somebody earlier uh, about something I've thought about in, in this in, from from meeting so many people 
of Irish heritage, the fact that maybe they've never been to Ireland, but maybe their grandparents or their great, great grandparents even, and they feel a connection. They feel a connection with the place, with the landscape. And the landscape somehow stays with people even over generations. It, uh, and uh, for many people, at least, and th that feeling of the place itself uh, has has a kind of a magic to it. It has it has something there that that allows the descendants of people that left there maybe a hundred, maybe one hundred and fifty years ago, maybe even farther back, and they still remember it and they still talk about it, and it somehow it somehow lives on. And to to experience. Ireland, you have to go to Ireland and you have to stand on the edge of Europe and uh, and feel it. I think, I believe that. That's beautiful. And we talk a lot about the landscape of Ireland. It's so, 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 so beautiful. And you have another favorite place um, that you told us about with being able to be there and, and get a sense of the walking tour and hear the history. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? about, uh, well, I mean, on our walking tours, and, and I suppose our, our, what makes us a little bit different is this, is that, is that all of our tour directors are coming, they have an interest, more than an interest in history, a, a passion for, for the past, uh, as well as, as the present, of course. But it, it is this, this photograph here you can see uh, is a place in County Sligo. Now, Sligo is uh, where the great poet William Butler Yeats came from. And he was very much steeped in this, in this Irish mythology. And it comes through in, in his poetry. But there's a place there called Caramore. And uh, Caramore, one of the... Uh, the big kind of uh, archaeological sites of, of Western Ireland. Um, if you go there, you can you you will learn all about why this landscape was important to these ancient people. And by ancient, I'm talking about about Stone Age people, late Stone Age people who didn't have metal, but they they had a lot of knowledge. Uh, they had a, they lived in the landscape, and they had uh, they created these. Uh, these monuments, burial monuments, and other things, clocks maybe, a lot of it's quite mysterious, but very, very fascinating. And we do a tour with an expert, uh, an archaeologist, a real archaeologist, who uh, really kind of explains um, what these things probably were and to explain how they fit into the landscape. So you, 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 you do come away with a much greater understanding that these ancient people, uh, they were not technologically advanced, but they had uh, they had an amazing knowledge as well. Um, that you know, that it never fails to impress me. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for painting that picture. I am so 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 excited to go on my Ireland tour. Well, and we can't now, wait to see. <laughs> thank you. Now I want to give Ali the spotlight now, and I have the same question for you. So if you were to pick a couple of your favorite go-ahead trips, what would they be? Um, so, well, as, uh, as Carl, Carl says, it's actually, it's really difficult to pick any, to pick specific ones out of the, the multitude of great tours that we have. But I would have to say that um, I have a particular fondness for one of the very first trips that I actually led for go-ahead, and that is um, Edinburgh and the castles of Scotland. I remember on that particular trip, how incredibly lucky we were. We had sunshine every day of the tour. The driver and I both commented on how unusual this was and kept saying, what is that yellow thing in the sky? <laughs> but, um, to it, but to be honest, you, I've done the tour many times since in all sorts of weathers and the landscapes are, they're always spectacular. You really just can't imagine the, the, the glory of the Scottish Highlands until you've been there, till you've got off the coach and kind of like stood on the moors and sort of soaked, soaked up the green and the, uh, the thrill of the, the landscape around you. One of the reasons that I really like uh, this tour in particular though, is I just think that it gives you a very good insight into the, into the different faces of, uh, of Scotland. So we start off the tour in Glasgow and that's a city that uh, it's probably not as well known 
to travellers as the capital Edinburgh, but in fact it's the largest city in Scotland and um, people always find it a real surprise. Um, it's got fantastic museums, it's got very proud Victorian buildings that just proclaim the city's um, 19th century importance as one of the wealthiest um, cities in the whole of the British Empire. So that's always a kind of like a, a, a nice surprise to start the tour with. Um, and we finish it in Edinburgh. And of course, Edinburgh is, uh, is the capital. You really see the difference between the two cities. Um, Edinburgh is filled with history. Um, you see this picture here. You've got a fantastic view of the, of the castle, which is located right on top of a volcanic plug in the center of what's a very small city, an easily walkable um, city. It's filled with ancient history and ghosts galore. So, you know, you shouldn't miss the chance to do a ghost walk while you're in Edinburgh. Um, but the thing that really makes this tour special is the days in between those two cities. When we head up north to the Highlands, that's the chance that we get for a, a much deeper dive into history and culture. And that's the part of Scotland that really is everything that you possibly imagine. And for Outlander fans, I'm talking to you. This is where you're going to get the chance to see those rolling green, green glens, the, the vast locks, the majestic mountains. Um, we're going to hear mystery fables, stories, castles and conflict. You're going to get the chance to taste whiskey and learn about whis whiskey distilling. Um, so we really do have a, a, a mixture of everything on, uh, on, this, on this particular tour. And if you're a castle fan, we do have some of my favorite favorite castles here. We have uh, um, Inverary Castle and for Downton Abbey fans, you might recognize that. That's one that we visited on our first day going out of, um, of Glasgow. It was featured in one of the Christmas episodes. It's when they kind of like headed up north for their Christmas seasonal festivities. So you might go, oh, yes, that, that looks familiar. <laughs> That's awesome. And on, well, I do have a lot of Outlander fans sign up for this <laughs> tour. So, so, so many that want to get up to the Highlands. And when you think about the authentic kind of hidden gems, hidden experiences on this trip that you may not see on the actual printed itinerary, what comes to mind for you? Um, so one of the, one of my real kind of like hidden gem secret places is somewhere that I like to take people as a little bit of an extra excursion on the day that we go up to Loch Ness and we have a chance to go on to go a bit of Nessie spotting on the on the the lake but there's a free afternoon when we're in Inverness and one of the extra little things that you can do is to is to come out and visit Culloden Battlefield and Clava Cairns both of these are places that uh, that feature in Outlander and um, Clava, Clava Cairns is a it's a prehistoric burial site um, and both of them have this mystery to them. They really have a, a magic and that, that indeterminable something that you feel when you know that you're, you're walking in the footsteps of ancients. Culloden, of course, if you've, if you've seen Outlander is, is where, the, where you'll know that the last battle that was fought on, on British soil was, uh, was fought and you really do walk through the battlefield where everything happened, but Clava Cairns is, it's just magical and um, and really off the beaten track. It's quite difficult to get to on your own. So um, that's a real highlight for me. That's awesome. There was another experience that you told me about that was pretty unique. Well, um, yes, it's something that I really think is a bit special with uh, with Go Ahead. We finish up the, the whole of the tour in Edinburgh, and of course we do the general the general visit to the castle and uh, thing that everything that you'd expect but we also do have right at the end on the last couple of days you have the chance to um to do a, a scottish kaylee with dinner and we have a kaylee band that plays and they play a lot of the music really tra traditional scottish music and as uh, after we've eaten they get us up to dance and you actually get to learn some of the steps and to to learn how to dance the gay gordon that's one of the most popular social dances that we have and then on our final night in in, uh, in scotland on this tour we actually have as part of, as as our pre-dinner special special something learning to play the bagpipes we have one of the what scotland's official piper 
She's a real, um, she's a real character and she teaches us how to play bagpipe. How often, how likely are you anywhere else to get that opportunity to learn to play a bagpipe? I'm an there expert. <laughs> how very, very cool. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's awesome. Okay, so like call, you couldn't choose just one. So I'm really curious to hear about your other favorite trip because it's pretty different from the Scotland tour. It's a little longer. You go to several different countries. So I'm excited to hear why that's your favorite. Yes, you're right. So the other one that I that I really love to do and uh, is one of my regulars is called Highlands of England, Scotland and Ireland. And as you said, yes, it's it, one of its one of its uh, great rewards is that we are touching on all of the nations of the British Isles. So it's not just highlighting one place, but you're really getting a chance to do England, Scotland. Um, we touch through Wales and then finish it up in, um, in Ireland. So you start off in London, which I might be a little bit biased, but is of course the greatest city in the world. Um, I would uh, I would add a little thing here that if you're if you're planning this trip and you have the time and the opportunity, I would absolutely recommend that you that you add on a couple of days beforehand. We you can add on a pre extension, or if that's not possible, just come a couple of days early just to get a little bit more um, out of London. Um, but we we do get that taster of London, and then we head up north on the train which is fantastic because you get to travel the whole length of England and you really see how the scenery is changing on the way up to Edinburgh. We have a couple of nights in Edinburgh, pretty um, similar to what we do on the Edin Edinburgh trip on the Scotland tour. And then, we, and then we head back down into England and we're traveling on that day through some of, one of my favorite parts of the whole of, uh, of England. Um, in fact, you might have to tie me to the bus because in the Lake District I'm always yearning out of the window going I want to hike up that hill <laughs> um, and we have a we always stop at a lovely place and have a, a real view of the the lakes and finish up that night in Liverpool which is very different to anywhere else on the tour um, and uh, there's very few tours in the UK that go ahead does that, that touch in Liverpool so this is quite quite special you have the chance uh, one of the little extra things that you could do is to do a Beatles tour. Of course, that's what um, so many people associate uh, Liverpool with. And um, it's great to be able to hear the history of, of, of Liverpool itself, but also to see how the Beatles really were influenced and uh, where they lived and their background as well. So that's a little extra special thing. That's and then awesome. we touch on. And then Wales is just spectacular. Um, and, I, and then we finish up going, so we have uh, six, five or six days in, uh, in Ireland and we really do hit some of the highlights that, uh, that Carl has already talked about. So you do Dublin and you see, and you get to climb, climb the Blarney Stone and um, you can see here, we've got a picture of uh, the, uh, the jaunting carts, which are on the Ring of Kerry, which is also one of the, the real highlights of the, the tour, getting to kind of like ride through Killarney National Park on the day we go around, probably one of the most spectacular drives on the whole tour uh, on the Ring of Kerry. Um, it's unmissable. So you really get just a fantastic overview, a, a kind of taster, and you probably end up this tour thinking, okay, I like this, I like this, but I wanna go back and spend some more time. So it's, it's a teaser, it's a taster but come back and then use that as a springboard to pick where you want to spend a bit more time. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Awesome. Now, when you think about a trip like this compared with some of our shorter trips, what are the differences with pace? Are, the, are there trips that are better for people with different levels of mo mobility? Um, well, to be honest, they're, they're, they're flexible. The tours can be, can be quite flexible. We do have people of all sorts of ages that come on these tours. Um, I would say that uh, the, the tours that start in, in London, that's great because if you have a little bit more independence, perhaps if you're younger, you'll really enjoy the chance that uh, you can have some free time there and um, get to learn to ride the underground system and to explore things. There's a lot more walking when you're actually in London. Um, but on the longer tours and the tours which have a kind of every other day, you might be traveling by bus. That's a great one because you can kind of recover on those days, kind of sit back, watch the scenery 
And uh, if you've been getting a bit tired, catch up on your sleep. But I do think that the, one of the um, special things and one of the uh, good things with Go Ahead is that the itineraries are always built with some free time in them. So we, we don't kind of pack every single day of the tour with things that are included. There's always the opportunity kind of every couple of days, there might be a, an afternoon that if you really are, if you're adventurous and you have your own interests, you can take off and you can do them. But if you, or if you'd like to have an afternoon and just rest and recover, you can do that. But if you want to, a bit more guidance, you can sign up to the extra excursion and you can kind of like get that extra trip to, to fill that time as well. So I, I love that we've got that kind of flexibility on the tour. And I really think that it does give the ability for people in all sorts of different um, ages and kind of mobility to, to find their own pace within the tour. So you can choose your own adventure a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So we've mentioned some hidden gems and that, that's something common with Go Ahead Tours. We try to include little surprises that you may not see written on the itinerary itself. And I believe you both have little surprises for us today. So Ali, what do you have for us? Uh, so I do have, so on, um, on a lot of my tours, people always come to, to England and say, do you know, I really want to have a, a high tea. I've heard about high, high tea. Where do I go? Where do I go and get a high tea? And I'm like, well, actually, it's not a high tea that you that you want. Um, high tea was something that was traditionally a working class tradition. Um, it was when the miners came home or the workers came home at five o'clock and they would have a kind of a, an early supper, which was hot, hot meal, quite big at a high table or a high counter. Whereas um, what people really are thinking of, they're thinking of an afternoon tea or a, what was known as a low tea. A low tea was more genteel. It was the upper classes with their little fingers um, <laughs> who would have a kind of array of uh, sweet meats and um, sandwiches and cakes and uh, a little bit more of a supper served on a low coffee table. So that that's, was quite a big meal. But actually, you can kind of get the best of that by what is also known as an afternoon cream tea. And I have prepared an afternoon cream tea here. I'm going to try and move my, move my um, computer around so you can see it, hopefully. Oops. Can you see Little, that? Oh, there they are. Jealous. Very, very jealous. So a cream tea comprises of um, scones or scones depending on where you are in the country. Um, we have scones. I made these earlier. I actually baked these with my fair hands. <laughs> <laughs> Clotted cream. Clotted cream is um, very, very thick cream. This has not been whipped. This is actually how it comes. That is how thick it is. <laughs> Clotted cream. Um, and traditionally, it should be strawberry jam. I didn't make this. <laughs> but it's still very nice. Cheers strawberry a little bit. Jam. <laughs> no problem. Um, and always served with with tea, obviously, which should be made in a pot, not with not in not in your cup. Um, but there's a dispute across uh, across the United Kingdom about how exactly you should eat your cream tea. Um, it has its origins in the West Country of uh, of England, in the counties of Kent and Devon. Um, and in fact, in uh, in Devon, I'm going to give you a demonstration. In Devon, you open your that's collapsed. <laughs> you would serve your cream tea, your, your scone with the, oops, with the cream on first, like that. You sort of like put it on nice and thick and then put the jam on the top, like that. So that would be a Devon cream scone. Um, but in Cornwall, they do it the other way around. They put the jam on first and this is this is how I would prefer to do it so jam on first and then you can put a lot more cream on on the top <laughs> that's why you like it like that like that one. more cream <laughs> apparently this is how the queen has it so oh. that is my favorite nice bit of tea <laughs> and a cup of tea cause scone and tea that's awesome thank you for making me hungry appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> call you you uh, prepared a surprise for us as well what do you have Indeed, I have. Um, now, what I'm going to do is show you how to make an Irish coffee. 
Irish coffee is, of course, uh, you can get these everywhere, but in Ireland, uh, they are different. You must ensure that you have Irish whiskey, most importantly. Now, if you go, if you go to Scotland, the Scots will tell you all about their whiskey. And in Scotland, they'll also, they basically invented everything that was ever invented. However, they did not, not invent whiskey. Whiskey comes from Ireland originally, uh, invented by monks, they say, about 1,500 years ago. Uh, the, the word itself, whiskey, is from the Irish ishkabaha. Ishkabaha means the water of life, and indeed it is. So uh, to make a good Irish coffee, Irish whiskey, any brand will do. Uh, you might find, you might be familiar with brands like Jameson, which are widely available, but any brand will do. Uh, and some coffee. So I have here coffee in a flask. So now you put in the coffee and then sugar. Uh, brown sugar is what is recommended. Oh, excuse me. So I am mixing the sugar in. And then, of course, the Irish whiskey. Most important ingredient. Most, most important. <laughs> uh, now, I won't show you exactly how much I'll put in here. But <laughs> We're enough, not judging you. Enough. Uh, and then the tricky part, which is uh, here again, we have, we have whipped cream. Now, this is not clotted cream, but you can see prepared earlier in my kitchen. Uh, the tricky part is to get the cream on top of the, uh, the glass of hot coffee and whiskey. What you do is the trick. You use a warm, two warm spoons, one to spoon the cream and the other to slide it gently on top. So the cream will float on the top. Now I know I'm a bit off screen here, but trust me on this. <laughs> it's okay. mastery. It is mastery. Um, a common mistake that people make is that if you don't do this delicately, the cream will sink right to the bottom. And you want to keep it on top. You want to keep it on top. Exactly right. So now. Okay. No. Finished product. Well, uh, <laughs> hold on one second. <laughs> now. If my mother saw this, she wouldn't be impressed. However, you can see most of the cream is indeed sitting on top uh, of a completed Irish coffee. Now, well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I'm tired. Yeah, completely acceptable. Not ten to my out of mother, ten. But oh uh, well. <laughs> awesome. It's, it's very good. And oh, by the way, in Ireland. We say slauncha. It means slauncha. cheers. It means health. Slauncha. So slauncha, everybody. Slauncha to you and to all of you at home. And Carl, I'm curious, when is the appropriate time to drink an Irish coffee? The appropriate time to drink an Irish coffee is whenever you feel like it. Uh, no. Uh, it, 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 is, <laughs> course, it tr normally would be taken after dinner. It is a quite a heavier, heavier style of drink. However, uh, if you come to Ireland... Um, nobody will really raise an eyebrow if you're having one at 10 o'clock in the morning, because after all, you're on your holidays. I love that answer. <laughs> now, we got a question from Gabra. She wants to know, um, Ali, what berry is inside the scone or scone? Um, so this is so traditionally scones would be just plain. Um, and but I like it with sultanas and you, you find a lot of recipes with sultanas. I'm not sure if you call them sultanas, but yeah, sultanas or raisins, currants. Perfect. Thank you so much. And Gabber, that was a really good question. And I'm excited to share with all of you that both of these recipes will be sent to you after the webinar. So make sure to check your email. And thank you both again very much for those demonstrations and for also answering a few questions already. Um, we have a couple more questions that are coming in through the chat. So let's see what we have. And a reminder to all of you, if you'd like to jump in and add a question, please feel welcome to use the Q&A feature. The first one I wanna start with is actually from Audrey. She was talking about, Ali, you spoke about the weather in Scotland and how rare it was to have a sunny day. And can you talk about the differences in the seasons and how that might relate to what you would see? 
Um, yeah, sorry, I've got a bit of scorn in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, well, it does, it does vary depending on what season that you come. But uh, we, we do have a, a saying in, uh, in the UK. Well, actually, it was from one of our great Scottish comedians, Billy, Billy Connolly, used to say, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So <laughs> whatever the season, you should be prepared that there, that there may be, a, there may be, un, in, probably there will be some kind of some <laughs> rain at some point. Maybe, probably, probably yeah. will. <laughs> Let, let's be honest. Um, so be prepared. Bring, you know, bring some warm. Even if you come in the in the summer, bring a bring a bring a sweater, bring a bring a raincoat, and bring some kind of like sensible shoes as well. Particularly if you want to get out onto the uh, to do a little bit of walking. Um, but as the year is different, like I would say probably some of your reliable times of year would be uh, May. May, May is May, early June is a really nice time to, to travel. Um, fall in kind of like September, we quite often have a, a nice kind of late summer, kind of Indian summer feeling in, at that time of year. Um, summer. Uh, right in August, I think it, I love to. I, I love the the Scottish tour, particularly for that time of year, because you uh, we have a variation which takes in the the Edinburgh Tattoo, which is a big military uh, march, military bands um, exhibition that uh, brings people from all over the world, both performers and and spectators, and coincides as well with uh, with the Edinburgh um, Arts and Fringe Festival, which is unmissable. It's a little bit busy, busier, but it's um, a very special and exciting time to be in Edinburgh. In Edinburgh. Um, but actually, if you travel even outside of these times, you always get something. If you go a little bit outside of the peak season, so if you were to travel in November, for example, we've got a great kind of Halloween tour. Um, you're starting to really get into the autumn, so you're kind of like bundled up a bit more, and it's it uh, features that's a Dublin, Edinburgh, and London tour, and you you really get that kind of a bit a bit more ghostiness. And then if you were to really travel in in the in the full winter, um, there's something really quite different about that. Yes, just wear lots of warm clothes, really bun, bundle up, but the the lights in London, you know, the Christmas lights um, in London are, are, are fantastic um, all along the, the Oxford Street and Regency, Regent Street, they're just renowned. Um, and if you were there for New Year, we have spectacular fireworks. If you're in Scotland, they, their, their New Year's celebrations are called Hogmanay. It's always a real, really lively time. So the weather might be a bit less, but you're getting a much fewer tourists and you're really getting um, a different experience. So just just be prepared that if you're traveling in the in the winter months, just bring more warm clothes. Um, you're still going to have a fantastic experience and it'll be less busy. So if the question is, when's the best time to travel? The answer is all of Any the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It depends on what you want from your experience. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Carl, we actually have a question for you. Um, where are the best places to hike in the UK and Ireland? Well, we're we're really blessed here in in the UK and Ireland in that in that there, there are literally hundreds of of amazing hikes uh, you can take. Um, more and more, you have a lot mapped out um, uh, hiking routes. In fact, they go the whole length of the island, the length and breadth of both islands. In fact, uh, Scotland is, is I would say more challenging. Um, if uh, for it has higher mountains, the highlands certainly are for serious hikers. Uh, the Lake District, Al Ali mentioned, she likes to go hiking there. Is uh, lower hills, uh, beautiful uh, scenery. But again, for for more serious walkers, um, hiking in Ireland um, along the west coast. Uh, there, there are many kind of mapped out routes and, and on so we, we do a walking tour of Ireland, for instance, and your tour uh, consultants would be happy to discuss, uh, you know, those tours with you specifically designed for walking. There are many is the, is the short answer. Awesome. Yeah, as Carl said, I, I'm particularly fond of the, the Lake District. If you're, if you're really a walker, 
um, and a, a, and the Peak District, which is right in the middle, it doesn't really Peak District doesn't really feature on a on a go ahead tour, Oops. <laughs> but um, but there's great walking there. Um, it's actually not that hard if you're if you're really interested in walking to kind of base yourself in a in a city, and then you can just our train system is so is so good that you can kind of get out of the city uh, easily and get to some um, really beautiful areas for longer or shorter walks we we really do have an incredible network of, of footpaths in um, particularly in, in England which are um, which are, we have open access we're very very fortunate and I'd say this Irish and British people they they love to um, it's it's a very kind of popular pastime uh, people do it all the time so they there are they, they create access for for those people literally thousands of people go out there are walking clubs it's a very it's a it's a big thing so um we're well set up for walking and hiking that's for sure that's awesome um for ali we have another question for you from kathy taking the landscape of scotland she she's taking the landscape of scotland and ireland tour um with the london extension in june of next year and she's curious what are the can't miss optional excursions do you have any favorites from your travelers um so on that particular tour landscapes of um so i would say well that's that's one goes to to giants causeway doesn't it, it starts in the the north um yeah, yeah. Gi landscapes giants. of scotland and ireland yeah yeah, yeah, it yeah. Does. so yeah. so giants causeway for sure um when you come down with the london extension i would definitely go to um i would definitely go to windsor and if you get I think that's got the Stonehenge and Bar, Stonehenge and Oxford excursion on it. Mm -hmm. I would do that. Um, yeah. They would be the the top ones. I've gone off the top of my head. Think what I I think are. as well when you go when you go to Ireland on this tour and, and many of the tours we do to Ireland we do offer a Irish music and dancing night uh, with a dinner inclusive Definitely. and that's a that's a definite. Uh, yes because you know music in ireland is very important the irish call we like having having a, a lot of fun on the music nights and, and these music nights are very very popular and we we always get amazing feedback and and people do seem to really enjoy them so i would definitely uh, recommend that as well i'm glad you said that because we actually had a question from caitlin saying do you recommend the irish dance show in dublin or would you recommend it in another city well, normally speaking, on our tours, um, it, it can vary. It varies depending on time of year and availability of show. We in Ireland generally they will either be in Dublin or in uh, Kerry if you're going to Kerry, possibly in Galway. It's kind of it depends on what is available and also what is going to fit in. Uh, with the tour, uh, I recommend them all. Uh, they're they're all of of very high quality, and um, as I said, our our feedback from them is is overwhelmingly very very good, very positive. Perfect, Ali. Do you have anything to add for that? Uh, no, I've just remembered that that tour that tour actually has some fantastic optionals on it. So that has Glendalough which I mm -hmm. absolutely love, Glendalough. That's one of the optionals out of, um, um, out of uh, Dublin. Carl, Carl, you already talked about that one, didn't, didn't you? Well, Glendalough, no, actually, Glendalough is, a, is an ancient monastic site. It's about, it's about an hour's drive from Dublin city centre, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And um, it's, a, it's a fairly spectacular uh, historical site it's it's the remains of it what was once an ancient monastic city from the 6th uh, to the 10th century AD in this uh, stunningly beautiful wooded valley in County Wicklow literally an hour from Dublin but you may as you'd be in a completely different world there um, so if you're interested in in the history in the history of Ireland in the history of Christianity in Europe or if you just yeah. want to get out of the city and go for a beautiful walk in one of the most beautiful places um, uh, that I know this is optional as well. 
Awesome. And we have had a lot of people asking and just general curiosity. This year, not having a lot of travelers coming, what have you guys been up to? <laughs> Go so first, <laughs> um, Well, it's been an interesting year. <laughs> um, so one, I would say that um, obviously we've missed, obviously it's been devastating not to be, not to be traveling and not to be out with everybody. This is what we love to do. But the, the only downside of uh, this, of, of this lifestyle is how much time you're away from home. So in fact, the up, the, you know, unexpected upside of being at home for the last <laughs> kind of eight months has been a chance to kind of like reconnect reconnect with with family with uh, with some of my best friends during the period that we weren't allowed to kind of um mix with people um i was able to i kind of discovered some new walking routes we were still still able to kind of get out and allowed to exercise every day so i got out and um kind of kept fit and did some fantastic walking of been cooking and playing the piano and just kind of reconnecting with things that you a lot of time you don't have a chance to do because you're just on the road so much so that's that's been a, that's been an upside I'd say silver linings silver yep. linings and call <laughs> we have just a couple minutes left so can you really quickly tell us what's one fun thing you've been up to this year yeah well like Ali said um pros and cons and definitely spending time with the family much more time than I normally get has been fabulous um I've been working on on my language uh I'm immersing myself in uh, in Spanish well because I have the time to do it um reading a bit more watching a bit more tv like everybody else cooking the type of thing that you know I like to do but um yeah filling my time and uh, yeah uh, it, it's not all been it's not all been too bad but we are we're all really looking forward to getting back to work awesome and i one of this will be our final question uh before we move on so really quick if there was one thing i know this is a hard question but if there was one thing that a new traveler coming to the uk and ireland they've never been before what's the one thing they have to do you can start. <laughs> the one thing they have to do. Well, I, I, I suppose there's one thing you have to do in, in every place. What is the one thing you have to do in Dublin? Well, I would say in Dublin, you have to go to the Museum of Archaeology in the center of Dublin, which is uh, uh, free to enter, open all every every day except for Mondays. And if you're lucky enough to be there, you got an hour of time, go in there and just be amazed, amazed at, at this collection of prehistory, prehistoric gold, this collection of Viking stuff that remember Dublin was founded by the Vikings. Um, the, the incredible craftsmanship, incredible atmosphere. And you just look and, and you just, to me, I, I just marvel at these things uh, every time I see them. So that's my, top pick for Dublin. Spoken like a true history teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ali, um, how about you? Oh, one thing. That's so I difficult. Um, well, I, I might just choose a slightly conceptual thing if that's, if that's okay. And, um, Sneaky. and I like yeah. where I had that. <laughs> and actually go, you know, it, we all, I think every traveler comes with a list of things that, that they want, that they want to do. And those are really important. Um, you you might not be you might not be back. So I think pick pick the best things amongst those that you really want to do. But I would absolutely say don't forget to just stop. Don't forget to sit in a cup in a cafe or or to go to a pub. I mean our pubs are so kind of important. Even if you're not really a drink not really a drinker, it doesn't matter. They're like they're like our living rooms. You know, we all live in very small houses. So to go to, go to an English pub or, or an Irish pub, um, have a pint of Guinness or a pint of beer or, or a Coke and just kind of engage with some local people and, and take some time to just see and watch how things are. Have some fish and chips. Don't get in. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> all, all of the senses. Yeah. You know, like just take, take some time 
be and to experience as opposed to just ticking off the things. Brilliant. My slightly conceptual. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for taking the time to answer our questions and to share your favorite trips. I know both of you actually said it's really hard to choose favorites because there are a lot of different UK and Ireland tours offered. So for those who aren't as familiar with our UK and Ireland itineraries with Go Ahead Tours, there's a lot of different ways you can travel. I actually saw some people asking about customizing things. I asked or I saw things about solo travel in the chat. So we have our classic tours, like a week in Ireland. That's what Call was talking about. And we have a sister version of it, which is a longer version called the Traditions of the Emerald Isle. We have adventure tours for our active explorers. So if you're wanting to get off the, pe uh, the beaten path, like Call said, I absolutely echo his recommendation of the Wild Atlantic Way. We spoke about the special event tours. So if you're wanting to see a trip, or I'm sorry, uh, a destination in kind of a festive season, I would recommend a special event tour like the Haunted Halloween. I know I saw somebody in the chat had been on that one, said it was really fun. Um, that goes to Dublin, Edinburgh, and London. We've got New Year's in London. We've got Ireland for St. Patrick's Day. For my uh, question about solo travel, if you are wanting to see the world, but you don't have a companion to travel with you, you are in such good company. Many people want to travel and they don't want to plan around another person's interest or schedule, but they're not necessarily comfortable being completely alone. So with our solo tours, you're able to travel solo, but never alone. And then conversely, if you actually have a crew of people who want to join you, you can customize your own trip, whether it's a deeper dive into your ancestral heritage or you want to see all the parts of Scotland that brought Outlander to life, we got you covered. So if you have any questions or would like to make your Dream UK or Ireland trip a reality, give us a call or check out our website, goaheadtours.com. And one more note for you, if you enjoyed yourself today, please mark your calendars for our next travel talk. It will be on December 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern, where you'll be joined by three more tour directors from Germany this time. They'll share insider information on some of the most anticipated events of the year, like Oktoberfest and the German Christmas markets. So Ali and Call, thank you so, so very much for taking the time to share your stories and insights and for answering our questions. On tour, we have the pleasure of your company for days and days and days, but even in just a short hour, I feel like I learned so much and I can't wait to see you both in person when we're able to do so. But until then, it's been wonderful to escape and dream of travel with you. And to everybody else who joined us at home, thank you so much for taking your time to be here today and for your participation. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. Ali and Call, are, are there any parting, your, <laughs> parting words you wanna share with us? Yeah, I would like to say uh, uh, your thanks. Thank, thank you uh, genuinely for taking the time uh, to come and listen to us, to get us uh, excited again for touring. Um, we'll, we'll be back soon. And uh, we have to see you there. So until then, take care. Yes, and um, at the same, I just want to reiterate to what Carl said. With um, we've missed you all. Thank you all for thank you all for for coming today and to for participating in this webinar. It's great to see so many faces, and it's great to actually see some some names and some people that I've actually worked with and and have become friends over over the years as well. So it's wonderful to see you see you back too, but. Um, we can't wait to get back. We can't wait to welcome you back here. So have a, have a safe time and um, come soon. We, we're, just, we're just waiting for you. Thank you both so much. And thank you to everyone who joined us today. Have a wonderful afternoon.